Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Alfa Romeo 156. Unlike its predecessor, the Alfa Romeo 155, which was also represented by all-wheel drive settings, this generation has basically only a front-wheel drive version, and most of the cars are equipped with a reliable mechanical box. She, however, has resource problems. With runs over 200,000 km, the synchronizers of the second-third gear are almost certainly worn out to the limit, and often the gears are already flying out. Less often there are difficulties with the differential or shaft bearings. Plus, on all engine machines, the gearbox shift drive is worn out. But on the whole, the mechanics are still relatively reliable and problem-free. And contract units cost within reasonable limits. For 100-200 euros, you can buy any box in good condition and with a guarantee. The drive units are reliable enough if you take care of the safety of the anthers. Corrosion damage to spline joints and other troubles are rare, but a similar problem is present on many older machines. The extremely rare all-wheel drive station wagons 156 Sport Wagon Q4 and 156 Cross Wagon Q4 have been produced since 2004 and are practically not represented here. Technically, they are close to the Alpha 155 and Lancia Delta. Torsen center differential, no clutches or plug-in drives. On cars with V6, 2.5 and 3.0 engines, they installed a full-fledged automatic transmission iSYNC AW5040LE, familiar from Opel, Saab and Volvo cars. It is not for nothing that this 4-speed gearbox has earned the title of Eternal. Its resource is usually more than 250-300 thousand kilometers, with more or less timely maintenance, with an oil change at least once every 80,000. The main problems are purely resource-related, associated with the very high mileage and age. They begin with the loss of pressure in the drive reverse package and the stretching of the brake band. The first signs are slipping or missing reverse gear. In the case of cow operation or the presence of the activated auto-neutral function, the resource will be less, but in any case it is a very simple transmission in design and it is made well. The second type of automatic transmission found on the Alpha 156 is the sales speed robot, a very interesting design for its time. In essence, this is an attempt to make an uncompromising robotic automatic transmission with one clutch. And I must say that in many respects the attempt was a success. Being new, such a robot worked very well, quickly and clearly changing gears. The secret of success was still in the fact that the usual H-shaped gear shifting scheme was preserved and, if necessary, the driver could simply use the gearbox as a normal one you, as a normal, as a normal manual one and when actively driving it was strongly recommended to use the manual mode. In contrast to the design of similar robots from ZF, a scheme with a simple pump and hydraulic drivers is used here and a hydraulic accumulator is used to speed up the switching. The grip is strengthening in comparison with the version of the conventional manual transmission, and the elk version turned out to be very good. As a result, up to runs of 120-170,000, the box usually needs only regular adaptation, and with frequent movement in a sporty style, it also needs to replace synchronizers. After a run of 150-170,000, difficulties begin associated with the shortcomings of the self-diagnosis system and pressure leaks, and the electronics start to malfunction, the rotation speed sensors requiring cleaning or replacement, the wiring to the sensors is naughty. The problems that have begun in terms of hydraulics and electronics negatively affect the condition of the mechanical part of the box, the clutch and synchronizers are quickly consumed, and pressure surges can knock out plugs and damage hydraulic oil seals. If I didn't scare you enough and you still want to buy a car with cell speed, then there are simple rules for checking the system for operability. When you open the driver's door, you should hear the pump actuation, a thin squeak from under the hood. If there is no squeak and the car doesn't start, then a possible reason is a hydraulic failure. Check the relay for turning on hydraulic pump, it is located in the relay box in front of the battery. When the machine is running and warm, with neutral gear engaged, the pressure in the hydraulic system should be kept at 55 bar, and the time between pump starts should be at least 15 minutes. A shorter time indicates a malfunction of the accumulator, and a lower pressure indicates a pump malfunction or large hydraulic leaks. If the time between pump starts is less than 50 for 55 seconds, then its resource is consumed very quickly. When traveling, you should pay attention to the indicator of the engaged gear. If it flashes, then the box doesn't have enough pressure. It is very bad if the malfunction lamp is on, but this is an obvious problem. Of course, delays with switching, crunching when turning on a gear, starting only in manual mode from second to third gear also clearly indicate that it's time for the box to be repaired. Often the first repair of the hydraulic unit consists of repairing the wiring, sensors and replacing the rubber bands of valves and pistons, as well as restoring the sail speed pump, or buying a new assembled unit in an auction in Italy or Japan. 
Often they install a conventional manual transmission instead of a robot. This is not the cheapest way to solve problems, but the most reliable one. The main engines on the Alpha 156 are twin spark quarters, where V6 of 2.5 and 3.2 are less common. Diesel engines are presented in versions 1.9 and 2.4 liters, and it is these engines that are best known in Russia. Engines with a volume of 1.9 in a slightly different design have been installed for many years on Opel cars and on Russian assembled Fiat Ducato, which is one of the most common commercial brands, and 2.4 is essentially the same engine but with one more cylinder. The most common inline petrol fours are distinguished by their combat character and a very unsuccessful design. You can forget the mess about the high cost of candles. In practice, if you do not buy platinum dance soap, the price is more than sparing, except that the set is double. The essence of the problem is quite different. First of all, the owners of the Alpha 156 suffer from the loss of oil in the slender head. Secondly, from the block construct, and there is also confusion in the catalogs for the suite. The Italians do not differ in meticulousness in the preparation of documentation. These twin parks have a solid construction age, and the phase shifter turned out to be brought in by Avil. It would seem that a very useful thing, improving the external characteristics of the motor, had the most negative effect on the resource of the camshafts and the hydraulic lifters. Losses of oil pressure during wear of seals and phase shifters, springs quickly finish off the camshaft cams. They literally round out. However, not only the phase shifter is to blame for this. Low oil pressure, a small channel in the slender head, current pest in oil nozzles, poor camshaft materials, remember the story about the wear of Chikuli and how you fought with it? And finally, not the most successful design of hydraulic compensators. It protrudes high from the valve and the side load wedges it. After the camshaft wear products enter their friction zone, the wear rate increases catastrophically. So if the engine is diesel and the compression is one of the cylinders has disappeared, then most likely the camshaft is being replaced and the cylinder head is being repaired. Moreover, the design of the cylinder head is also distinguished by unsuccessful valve guides. Camshaft wedging and poor oil pressure can lead to a slip of the timing belt of balancers, but the consequences are the same, the meeting of valves with pistons. Considering the low quality of the metal and the design of the valves with the, cavi with the cavity, the separation of the valve disc usually follows, if the motor didn't stop right away, of course. The phase shifter requires a bulkhead every 50 80,000 mileage or replacement. It is not clear how long the timing will take, but it is worth looking at each MOT for a wear of the camshaft cams. And for oil is only Paul Ash with a large package of extreme pressure additives. And change more often. This is just the case when once every 10,000 is already too much, it is better once every 7. Clean oil is important for another reason. The oil pump is very gentle and the slice contamination quickly puts it out of action. I already explained how a decrease in oil pressure affects the condition of the camshaft, but not by them alone. Seizures on the crankshaft liners are found, although they are not so badly executed with an obvious margin of safety. Moreover, the original Selenia oil with its special quality, contrary to the legends of seasoned Alfisti, doesn't differ and is one of the factors contributing to the death of the engine. The situation is very similar to the apparently unsuccessful alliance between Castrol and BMB. In principle, if you pour high-quality oil, change it often so that dirt from mechanical wear doesn't accumulate and additives develop, often change timing belts and rollers, get rid of the balancer belt and monitor the state of the phase shifter and camshafts, then the engine can run for a quite long time. But there are too many ifs and it is difficult to repair. There are many nuances, ranging from a cunning pulley bolt and ending with the already mentioned inaccuracy catalogs. As a result, now the chances of meeting a live motor are small. After a run of 150-170,000 km, the engine will most likely require serious complex repairs. The V6 now as the Busso engine are very different from inline fours in terms of workmanship. In any case, there are no such problems with camshafts, oil pressure and cylinder head design. But the oil uptight nevertheless is characteristic of them. Motors 2.5 in 2000 received a title of engine of the year and is strikingly different from all European motors to which you are accustomed. They resemble ZMZ V8 engines. After all, they are vest, cast iron sleeves, the block is assembled on hairpins, and this is not tuning but factory equipment. The oil pump is quite reliable, the timing drive has a very durable belt, and the original components are of very high quality. The main problem of such aged motors is a complex design, lightweight pistons, and an oil appetite, and also a variety of oil leaks, overheating, and poor performance of the control electronics. The engine is extremely sensitive to contamination of the cooling system, as well as malfunctions of the injection system, and even its strong mechanics can be ruined. Motor versions of, after 2001 have fewer electronics problems, but the components are noticeably more expensive. 
However, the Alpha 156 is not a cheap car to maintain in any of its variants. Diesel engines seems like a panacea. Practice shows that are that they are much more practical than gasoline ones in operation, but they also have enough choice. Simple 8 well versions of the 1.9 turbo diesel are still inferior to the German version in terms of workmanship, starting with the resource of the timing and valves and ending with the quality of the fuel equipment. And 2.4 is not at all as reliable as on commercial trucks. And of course, the set of diesel problems doesn't disappear anywhere. Unless contrary to usual, these motors are far from rare in principle, which facilitates maintenance and, if necessary, replacement with a contract one. On this information about the problems of the Alfa Romeo 156 is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.